This is Star Talk, and right now we're slipping in an explainer. These have become a very popular format of our offerings, and we take some topic that's in the news or not, and just tell you the latest on it, and what's going down and what's going up. I got with me Paul Mercurio. Paul, Good welcome to back see you again. Yeah, thanks. Great to be back. All right, dude. You're you're still hanging out with Stephen Colbert. As one yeah, of his you know. stable of comedians, is that yeah. right? Yeah, you know, somebody's got to carry him, you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> don't tell the boss I said that. I'm, okay, of course <laughs> not, okay. Uh, <laughs> that's our secret and every listener here will Absolutely. all keep that a secret. Absolutely, okay. <laughs> You're due to be back on the show. You haven't been on in a while. No, I haven't been in a while. That's all right. That's all right. And you, uh, and you've got your own podcast, Inside Out, with Paul yeah. Mercurio. Yeah, and you've been on it. You've been great. You were Very great nice. on it. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Thanks for having me. Thanks Absolutely. for having me. Well, you know what we're talking about today, okay? There's the JUICE mission, Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer. That's a great name because it tells the alien forms that we're like rocking vitamin C and we're not to be trifled <laughs> with, okay? <laughs> now, I know a little bit about it, but I don't have the straight-up expertise necessary to, cl- to, to qualify for an explainer installment, we've got our friend of Star Talk, Kevin Hand on hand. Kevin, welcome back to Star Talk. Hey, Neil. Uh, great to see you again. Hi, Paul. Uh, Hi, great Kevin. to meet you. All right, you're an astrobiologist and a planetary scientist at the Jet Propulsion Labs in Pasadena, California. Show and- off. Oh! <laughs> wait, wait. You haven't heard nothing yet. Uh, author of Alien Oceans, The Search for Life in the Depths of Space. Love it. Love it. You direct the Ocean Worlds Lab at JPL, and you're co-investigator of the Europa Clipper and the Dragonfly Titan missions, and you were also a scientist with the Mars Perseverance mission. So you the man. <laughs> I would say. I would say so. There's a lot of us. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's an incredible team. We no longer have time for the segment just because of your introduction. <laughs> great to have you. <laughs> Yeah, so so give me give us all like we read the headlines about this mission that was recently launched, but why don't you give us the highlights of what you're looking for and why and how come this mission wasn't flown decades ago? Oh goodness, yeah. <laughs> um, so the first uh, big picture thing with with Juice uh, is that it's incredibly exciting from the standpoint of it is one of a pair of twin spacecraft. Juice is the European Space Agency's spacecraft heading out to Jupiter to study the moons of Jupiter and Jupiter itself. And then on the NASA side, in about a year and a half, October 2024, knock on wood, we'll send the Europa Clipper mission out to the Jovian system to study Europa directly. And while there are many different things that we're uh, excited about, for me personally, uh, it boils down to one word, and that is oceans, oceans, oceans. We have good evidence that worlds like Europa and Ganymede and potentially Callisto, three of the large moons of Jupiter, have liquid water oceans beneath their icy shells. And if we've learned anything from life on Earth, it's that where you find the liquid water, you almost always find life. That's been a mantra of NASA, follow the water, right? That, exactly. That's guided so we're a lot we're starting to get it done. We're, 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 we're getting out there. You, you, you're figuring it out. And so why why is this the first time we're sending probes? I mean, we've known about it, all right, yeah. ever since probably the early early Voyager missions. So what, why did it take so long? <laughs> yeah, Neil, as you know, this, this business is not for the faint of heart. When I was an undergrad many moons ago, uh, there was a, a NASA graphic showing a melt probe going through on Europa, and the date on that mission was 2009. Well, 2009 has come and gone and we don't have a melt probe, but at least we have these two missions heading out there to fly by these moons and give us incredible remote sensing data and observations uh, of the surfaces of both Ganymede and Callisto. Wait, so you're saying there are things, you go in there, but you're not going to land on either of those missions? Correct. Come on. I what know. Are we doing? <laughs> I mean, I could run this mission. You guys. Guys, guys. <laughs> Don't, don't make me cry. No, no. Listen, are you working three day? Are you working three day weeks? Is that the problem? <laughs> just, here? just, just deploy Paul. He'll have an axe pick. He'll get through it just fine. Listen, but, I just want to know if we're going to find Seven Elevens on other Earths because on other on other planets because they're doing really well for us here. People seem. Oh, is we, that, listen, is big, that your big, sign big, of life? Is big that, is... gulps and spinning hot dogs. It's doing well for us here. If we can find it in other... <laughs> we'll, we'll mark that down as a biosignature. 7-Elevens. Yeah, yeah. what, what kind of biosignature can you expect if there's life in the 
under ice water that's not otherwise um, reaching the t detectors of your flyby missions? Yeah, yeah. So it's a great question. And the, the goal of both the JUICE mission and eventually the Europa Clipper mission is to assess the habitability of these worlds. And JUICE specifically will fly by Europa, it'll fly by Callisto, but then it will uh, go into orbit around Ganymede. And Ganymede is the largest moon in our solar system. Uh, it's, it's bigger even than Mercury. And it's got all sorts of curious things along with the ocean. It's got right. its, it's own... It's bigger than planet Mercury. Right. That's Don't right. You... Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's right. And uh, it's got its own magnetic field. We don't understand why. Um, and as I mentioned, it, it likely has this salty liquid water ocean. Who knows? It could have life. Um, but Ganymede's mm -hmm. ice shell is quite thick. In the case of Europa, uh, and by thick, I mean about, uh, let's call it 100 kilometers, give or take 50. I would call uh, that thick, yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yes. <laughs> and then, <laughs> A little and bit. Then, yeah. And then in Europa's case, we're talking about an ice shell of a few to perhaps 20 kilometers in thick. Now, now that still sounds thick. And by, by comparison, the thickest part of the Antarctic sheet is about four kilometers. So Europa may have an ice shell as thin as Antarctica's ice sheet. And why that's important is because at least for now with these spacecraft that will fly by uh, Europa and JUICE, which will orbit Ganymede, the ice shells serve as a window into the ocean below. And so we hope that by studying the surface chemistry with various spectrometers, we can figure out if we're seeing ocean chemistry coming up onto that ice and possibly things like carbon compounds, organics, uh, things that might be hints of a habitable ocean beneath the ice. Okay, so you're saying because the ice, I'm saying like the obvious now in retrospect, because the ice is a frozen variant of the water that's below it, if you study the ice, you'll get some indication of what might be below it. Is that a fair assessment? Exactly. It's, it's certainly for the case of Europa, the ice shell serves as a lens into the ocean below. For Ganymede, it's still a bit of a question mark, but we do think we're seeing salts on the surface of Ganymede also, and salts would be indicative of uh, ocean material coming up to the surface. Aren't thermal pockets key to this too, Within uh, it, once you're below the ice and that's where the feeling is that that this life form can really ooh, exist ooh. Yeah, yeah yeah uh, well, you're, not uh, trying to, you're not supposed to stump the guest <laughs> no i you know what i think i'm done here this is called i'm doing drop the earbuds there we go <laughs> well done paul well done yeah, yeah. so I'm, so kevin we've seen these pictures of geysers and sort of pressure forced uh flows coming from beneath ice maybe not on G ganymede or but we've seen them on these moons so is there uh, localized sources of heat or is this a general warming from the tidal forces that we've read about? Yeah, so the straight up answer is we don't know. Um, but in the case of Europa, we do have good evidence of a lot of fracturing happening on its surface that could be from the tidal flexing of the ice shell. Just to be clear, this is not fracking. This is fracturing. <laughs> fracturing. <laughs> Please don't <Yeah>. start picketing. <laughs> there we go. No, you want more more oh. money for it to drill for oil? drill, baby, drill. <laughs> All right. That that part would be nice. But the yeah. um yeah, Jupiter is 318 times as massive as the Earth. And so when you think about the tidal energy that that we experience just looking at the ocean tides here on Earth going in and out. And now magnify that and uh, think about what it would be like to be on Europa orbiting Jupiter. There's just a tremendous amount of tidal energy getting pumped into Europa. And that could generate, uh, cause these fat fractures. It could generate hydrothermal vents on the seafloor. It could generate plumes of oceanic material erupting through the ice and out onto the surface. We just don't know, but hopefully with these spacecraft uh, that are being launched, uh, JUICE just launched and Clipper will be launched soon, hopefully these spacecraft will be able to uh, to give us some uh, some data that will help us nail this down. Okay, so now let's say you get some data and you say, oh, there's some organics. Let's go back and now dig. So are you going to melt through 10, 15 kilometers of ice or you have some other clever way to do that? <laughs> yeah, so first are, you gonna, would... are you going to launch uh, Bruce Willis onto a craft that's going <laughs> to land with a laser? 
<laughs> a, a, a nuke. He's got to drill the hole for the nuke. That's it. I'm yeah. telling you guys, this could be a Hollywood movie. We're going to find life. Okay, it's going to be directed by Michael Bay. Dwayne Johnson's going to be the lead. Wait, wait, there is a movie called The Europa Report. Oh, there right. is? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Which, which, which I have a cameo in. I don't want to brag. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think I was overlooked by the Academy that year, maybe. But... I voted for you. <laughs> so what is the mechanism to actually do the drilling? Well, we've got a few different mechanisms, but before we landed a, a drill or melt probe on the surface, we would have to send a lander down to search for, uh, for biosignatures, to search for signs of life. And I think with a landed mission that did that, we would then have the kind of the, the, the confidence to move forward with a, a truly ambitious mission of getting through the ice. And, and the initial lander would also give us the the necessary measurements of the ice thickness and the, what we call the regolith properties, kind of the, the physics and chemistry of the ice and, and what it would take to drill or melt through it. So are people still thinking about melting through? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, oh, and, okay. So, uh, so yeah. last I read, you're going to melt with some kind of radioactive thermal ask, generating like... bolt that drops through. Is that correct? Right. So so you could use uh, what's called an, an RTG uh, 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 to melt through, or you could use a mechanical drill. Uh, we just don't know enough about the properties. Or the you could properties. use a fire starter that you get at Ace Hardware for two ninety nine. <laughs> right. Just If you just do that enough. <laughs> That's okay. Can you, can yeah, I ask yeah. you, you know, also, Paul, you got to, go you got to join NASA. It's very clear. <laughs> but wait, wait, Kevin, in just the couple of minutes we have left, uh, I know NASA has an office of planetary protection that worries about forward contamination of our germs or anything else that, or back contamination to earth. If we have sample returns, if you're going to melt through ice with a radioactive object, won't that disrupt or interfere with any life that might be there? and possibly create Godzilla? Because last I checked, we got Godzilla because of radioactivity from fallout from nuclear wars, last I checked. Right, and and that's certainly a, a tremendously important consideration that we factor into all of our missions that look for signs of life beyond Earth, because uh, we want to protect Europa for the Europans. We want to protect Mars for the Martians. And that's why in one of the, the key initial designs for landing on Europa, there is no uh, radioisotope uh, source. Uh, it was just based on primary batteries. Uh, it simplified a lot of those concerns about bringing little earth hitchhikers that could um, uh, contaminate the ocean. Okay. You, I heard Jupiter has a lot of radiation on its own and it bombards Europa. It seems counterintuitive to me. How does, how does life exist when being bombarded by radiation oh, in on Europa. Good one. Man. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, yeah. Well, roll. The, uh, and <laughs> this is this, this is right. Uh, this is right uh, with uh, exactly what I do in my lab, etc. Europa gets bombarded by all these electrons and ions from Jupiter's magnetic field. The ice on Europa protects anything in the ocean below. But there's this really cool thing that happens. So right now, as you're breathing Earth's atmosphere, what is what's the most important compound that you're breathing in for the sake of your energy? I'm thinking oxygen, yeah. Bingo, mm -hmm. right, exactly. So we need oxygen. Anything large on Earth, any ma macro organism requires oxygen. Microbes can get by on other stuff. On Europa, the radiation environment from Jupiter uh, bombards the ice, splits apart some of the H2O, some of that recombines into oxygen. And if some of that oxygen in the ice of Europa gets transported to the ocean below, and who knows, maybe uh, Europa's ocean has enough oxygen to support not just microbes, but also fish or European squid or that Godzilla. Thing. <laughs> Godzilla. <laughs> A squid versus Godzilla. That's yeah. good. That's the yeah. movie I'll pay to yeah. see. Yeah. We can fund our, yeah, we'll fund our missions that way. And, and just to be clear, Kevin, you said you break apart the hydrogen and oxygen in the water and then the oxygen recombines. With itself, you mean, right? Exactly. Because if you break yep. apart water, it's just H2O. There's only one oxygen sitting there. And yep. oxygen's going to find another one to get O2, because that's what we breathe is O2, the oxygen Bingo. molecule. Right, OK. Yep. J just clever. So uh, how soon, last question here, how soon can we, uh, how long does it take to get there? And when are we going to have our first data? Yeah, so data from JUICE and the Europa Clipper mission will come back in about the 20, 30, 31 time frame is when we'll enter the Jovian system. And so the early 2030s, we'll start getting pictures back um and then uh 
who knows what happens after those missions. Don't you think at that point people are going to be like, oh, this is so eight years ago. Like, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Jupiter, blah, blah, blah. Like, well, no, know. no. So, Paul, no, there's a rule, an unwritten rule. Never engage in an experiment if you don't live long enough to see the results. So, <laughs> okay. so, you can, so, so Kevin, I think he's got another eight yeah. years in him. We're hoping for yeah. it. We're bucking for you, Kevin. Yeah, you look good. Yeah. Oh, you look thanks. Good. I'm hoping I can live long enough until yeah. we get that lander out yeah. there as well. Uh -huh. I need a little more fruit, but otherwise you look good. You'll be okay. Yeah. Well, I love what you do, Kevin. And I have this fantasy that we're going to take Star Talk on the road that will do a little sort of recording from your lab and just you can show us what you do yeah. there. And, and so what kind of creatures you're creating in your in, in your oceans. Excellent. Or we can, oh, you, you, uh, I could use more help in the lab. We can get you doing an experiment and uh, irradiating some stuff. Be a lot cool, of fun. Cool, cool. And bring Paul because he'll have some great questions that I'll, I'll try. Excellent. Those are the I'll, only two he knew. <laughs> exactly. I studied for weeks for this. Thank God I remembered them. All right. We got to wrap it there. Uh, Kevin, so. always great to have you here as you're our window into all that matters as we exp as we continue to turn the solar system into our backyard. Uh, so stay in arm's reach of us. We'll come back to you. Paul, I, I know you got to run. Uh, Stephen Colbert is waiting for his next joke. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Very interesting stuff, Kevin. And uh, I, I, I'm for you, I got to go fight Godzilla now. So uh, there you go. All right. Uh, <laughs> All right. This has been Star Talk, another explainer edition. This one on the Juice mission and the uh, Clipper. What's the full name of the NASA version? Europa Clipper. Europa Clipper. Juice from the European Space Agency and the Europa Clipper from NASA. Neil deGrasse Tyson, you're a personal astrophysicist here. Keep looking up.